You're listening to Denver Wine Radio, the podcast about Colorado wine. My name is Paul Bonaquisti. I'm the winemaker at Bonaquisti Wine Company, an urban winery I launched back in 2006 in Denver, Colorado, where I've been making and learning about wine ever since. I'm sitting down with other wineries and wine experts to find out what makes Colorado wine so unique and to help you find the wines you like to drink. And now, let's put some altitude in your glass. Hey, welcome everybody to Denver Wine Radio. Taking a little break from wine today, although it might hit the conversation. Special guest in the studio, Angel Mendez Soto. Welcome, Angel. Hola, hola. It's good to see you. Good to see you too, man. Well, let's let tell everybody about what you do. I, I, I can tell you, uh, I mean, you've been my neighbor for as long as I've lived in the neighborhood on our street. But you've been acting around Denver in plays at Su Teatro and, and everything uh, in between. And you can tell fill all that in for years now, right? How long have you been acting? I've been doing theater for, since I've been in, in Colorado for 44 years. I uh, met Tony way back when. And uh, they were doing theater that I thought was important and necessary, telling stories about about uh, Latinos here in Colorado. Yeah. And, uh, and Tony, uh, tell everyone who Tony is. Tony Garcia is the artistic director of Su Teatro uh, Cultural and Performing Arts Center. We're, and we're located at uh, 7th and Santa Fe. But I'm here today to talk about another project, it's kind of an old new project. It's called Puerto Rican Nocturne. Puerto Rican Nocturne was uh, is a play that's written by Jonathan Marcantoni, another Boricua, another Puerto Rican, and it's directed by Noemi Negron, otra Boricua, another Puerto Rican. <laughs> uh, the, we have our stage manager who keeps us in line, Veronica Strait Lingo, and we're presenting it here in the north side at uh, the historic, and I like to emphasize that, is the historic Bug Theater, yeah, uh, on Thirty Seventh and Navajo. That that place has been around for a long time. Great part of the neighborhood, and we did a a movie screening there years ago. Uh, there was a wine movie that came out called Merlot Merlove. We we did a little movie screening over there at the Bug. So uh, very I, fond of the Bug Theater. Yeah, it's 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 a staple of the neighborhood. That's one thing about this neighborhood. I say. It has many tesoros, it has many treasures. One is that place, the historic bug theater. We have we have authors of Rudy Garcia. He lives just a few blocks from here. He's a, an established author. We got Bobby Lefebvre, who's the Colorado Poet Laureate. I mean, yeah. he, he lives right here in the north side. And yourself. Oh, come <laughs> on. No, no. <laughs> hey, this place here you got is incredible because you got you bring in excellent wine you do these broadcasts and you bring in some great music to the neighborhood so right on thank you, you know, angel no it's really the pleasure's mine to have you here tell us about uh, a little bit about puerto rican nocturne what's it about and uh and why it's so special to you well um and the part you play puerto rican nocturne is basically the, the story of of a situation that happened in puerto rico 44 years ago, actually July 25th, this is going to be the 44th anniversary, a group of independentistas or activists who believed in the independence of Puerto Rico were brought up to an area called Cerro Maravilla, where there were a lot of broadcasting stations, uh, brought up there by a police informant, and basically uh, they were murdered. Wow. It had many repercussions throughout the island. It was kind of, kind of became like a little mini Watergate because there was corruption involved. There was a police informant. There were, there were investigations by the FBI that uh, led to quite a quite a bit of arrest of, of police officials, and it became a, a, a socio political flashpoint on the island. But Puerto Rican Nocturne deals more with the two characters, which is the police informant, right? And, it, and the mother of one of the people that was murdered up there. And it basically deals with 
their points of view and, and dealing with the personal issues that, that, that involve grief, that involve uh, dealing with, with that grief and, 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 and then sometimes losing your, your uh, will, which happens to, to both characters. And you're looking at it from their perspective. My character is a composite of many characters, I guess, in, in, the, in the system itself. Mine is Captain Morales. Basically, he is the man that recruits uh, the police informant. His, his name was Alejandro Malave uh, Gonzalez. And he was recruited as a teenager, right? Basically, fresh out of high school. And he was a staunch statehooder and everything else. And basically, he, he has this incredible belief, right, that mm-hmm. what he's doing, no matter what it is, it's, it's correct. And that thing begins to be chipped away a little bit more and more uh, once this incident at Cerro Maravilla occurs. Uh, on the other side, there's the mother. Uh, oh, by the way, Alejandro is played by uh, Diego Estrada, the photo of him right here. All right. Couldn't get him to come, so I brought his picture. And uh, the mother is played by Paula Miranda, both excellent actors. And, and Paula's character as the mother, she, you can see her going through all these catharsis of losing a son, of sometimes of, of points losing her beliefs in the struggle itself. And all of these things that intertwine them and then separate them. But at the same time, there's, there's, all, this, there's all this catharsis that goes on that you can, you can see where these characters kind of meld, right? Okay. And then blow apart. Uh, so it, it's a very intense murder, mystery, drama. And uh, I, I really hope that people will come and see it. We had an excellent opening. Nice. Uh, yeah. Le, le cho, lechoneria um, Boricua, uh, they, uh, they uh, handled the food. Nice. We had a lot of Puerto Rican food on opening oh, night. I love it. Yeah. And so so it just opened uh, August 5th. And we opened August 5th. We have like five, six performances left. Okay. Uh, Thursdays, Fridays, uh, Saturdays, and then uh, we have matinee performances okay. on Sunday. And it finishes up on the 21st. Uh, we'll, yeah. The last performance so. will be on the 21st. Okay. So we've got uh, two weekends left yeah, two to weekends get out left. and see it. Yeah. And it's interesting, right? Like I said, because of the political situation in Puerto Rico, it's interesting that the play opens up at a time when <laughs> last week the ex governor of Puerto Rico, uh, Wanda Vasquez, was arrested for corruption. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> it's like things continue to evolve, you know, yeah. on the island. I got involved because back in 2019, I, I wanted to, uh, to do a, a play. And play a Puerto Rican. I have, I'm, I'm from New York, originally born in New York, Puerto Rican family. My parents from, from San Tuce. And uh, the teatro has provided me a lot of, a lot of outlets to, to do work and to do the stories of Latinos. We did a couple of plays, actually, mm-hmm. Puerto Rican plays. And in 2019, I wanted to do uh, one another one. I wound up meeting uh, Jonathan. Mark Antoni and uh, traveling to Colorado Springs to do this part back in uh, 2019 in the winter and then in in uh, the beginning of uh, of uh, 2020, but the play never opened thanks to COVID. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> luckily the dream uh, was still there with John. He was able to get some uh, some assistance and support from Idea Stage. That's inclusion, diversity, equality, access on stages and Sojourn projects, and Control Group and Sasquatch Group. All these all these people have been supporting us, and of course the Bug Theater. And we were finally able to put it on. And Karma is so interesting because I was traveling up there to Colorado Springs <laughs> to do it an hour and a half. Yeah, and now I'm. It's five minutes from my house. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. It's just incredible. Yeah. Karma works out sometimes. <laughs> it, does. it does. So the, the play is at 
uh, historically accurate? Is that what you'd call it? I mean, this well, took place in the late 70s, right? Yeah, it, it took place in, in uh, 78. In 1978. What, I, what, what John basically did is uh, he got really interested in this story. Mm-hmm. And he noticed, I guess, that a lot of the story just dealt with the men, the men in, in what was going on at that time. And he really gives a lot of a lot of emphasis on the female parts. There's the mother and the things that she's going through. And there's another character who is the, the girlfriend wife. Well, they can call him Gonzo, but uh, Alejandro, the, the police informant. And her name is Mari Calming. And he gives these, these women like such a, such a voice in the play uh, that it shows the aspects of, you know, she was with this guy. It didn't know him. And, and, and it's, it's that struggle between them, you know, because she mm-hmm. met him under circumstances where she thought he believed in independence and then come to find out he works for the, he works for the police, you know, and so this conflict that, that, that happens in their relationship. So I really, uh, thank John for, for bringing those aspects because he's got some very strong women, women roles in this play. Well, I'm excited to see it. We're, we're coming this weekend. I hope so. everybody out there will come to see this play. It's, yeah, uh, really. You need to, uh, I need to go out and support the bug theater and, uh, support all these, uh, all, all these theater actors. You guys are put this show together. It's been, it's been now a couple of years in the running to get, could get to this stage. Yeah. Well, this, and this project, I, I know it's been John's, uh, John's love for a long time. So, uh, I, I I remember one time sitting in during the rehearsal said, "Look, man, your your baby's getting born finally, but <laughs> yeah, he, he was he's beaming, you know. So I'm I'm glad to see that. I you know people should come out and support local theater here in Denver. We have a lot of local, really good plays, and I I have been blessed to be able to to participate in a lot of this. Yeah, and thank you for this opportunity. No, you're very welcome. Thank you for coming down." And uh, get your tickets to Puerto Rican Nocturne. You can do that online. Uh, in fact, you can go to Puerto Rican Nocturne dot com. You can go to Puerto Rican Nocturne, or you can, or, or you can go to the to the Bug Theater website and also get tickets. Oh yeah, uh, uh, Puerto Rican Nocturne. Down at Ticket Spice is what it is. Yeah, yeah. TicketSpice.com. So, and then I'll throw the link up too in our uh, in our notes, our show notes here. Appreciate so, it. if anyone wants to go out and see the show, uh, they can do it. We got to, uh, through uh, August twenty first to get over to the Bug Theater, which is at thirty seventh and Navajo, to see Puerto Rican Nocturne and get to see Angel Mendez Soto, great theater actor, and of course my great neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> so, For the Boricuas out there. Vengan a verlo. Apoye su teatro. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. <laughs> Thanks for coming down. Thank you. That's our show for this week. Thank you so much for listening to Denver Wine Radio. Your homework for the week is to go out and taste some Colorado wine. If you have any questions or comments or just want to let us know what you're drinking, go to denverwineradio.com where you can email us or leave us a voice message. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, put some altitude in your glass.